Hi, this is Seb with a morning video. This will be a review of the game 7C. It was a, re a request by uh, our friend Sam G, who uh, don't know about the game. So here we, here we go. In this game, uh, it's a it's a world about swashbuckling and sorcery, piracy and adventure, diplomacy, intrigue. Archaeology, exploration, secret societies, and uh, horror. Also, you can have uh, a lot of humor in this game. Um, if you like movies like Pirates of the Caribbean, Cutthroat Island, and every Zorro movie ever made, this game is for you. It's a cinematic game that is based on the pir pirate genre, but also every every genre that touched the swashbuckling style, like musketeers, like uh, I don't know knights, sailors, but you can do also secret societies, intrigue, high politics, war, war story and there's a little bit of uh, Lovecraftian horror in, uh, built into the, the setting. So let's talk about the setting a little bit. It's based on the, the idea of an alternate world that is really based on uh, 17th century Europe dur during the Age of Sails. I'll show you the maps. It will give you an idea of the universe. Well, as you can see, the basic layout of the of the map is really close to uh, that of uh, our own Europe. So you have country like Avalon, which is comprised of three island. If I remember correctly, it would be Einishmore, the Highland Marches and the Avalon Island itself. You have here the uh, Vendel uh, Island. Uh, yeah, Avalon is, is based on uh, Great Britain and uh, the United Kingdom. Vendel would be all the Scandinavian country wrapped in these little islands. Your Finland, your, your Iceland, then you have Yusura, which is based, as you can guess, on Uganda, one of the largest countries in the world, Russia. Then you have Eisen, the Iron Country. This is based loosely on Germany. Then you have Montaigne, and I pronounce it in French. Montaigne is a country based on France, and as you can see, uh, the country is currently at war with the country to the south, uh, Castille, which is based on Spain. And you have finally Vodace, which is based on uh, Italy and uh, all the, the Sicilian uh, islands. You have also, as you can see, two other countries, the Empire of the Crescent Moon and Cathay, which is, which is China, and here you have a kind of the Middle East Arabia country. These two countries uh, in red are not, are not well defined in, uh, in the basic books, but uh, later on they uh, fully develop these, uh, these two countries so you can play uh, Arabian style uh, game like uh, like Aladdin or uh, Sinbad or you can go full Wuxia style with uh, with China and a little bit of Japan in there so as you can see on the cover there is a date over here 1668 the book assumed that 
the the book the the game comes with a, a basic storyline with uh, kings and queen and uh, l'empereur Léon in uh, in Montaigne. So there is kind of a basic setup to the whole uh, the whole settings with nations and uh, you have great NPCs uh, well described in, in every country. You can use it or not and it won't make a difference in your game but since most of the job is done for you it's really easy to just pick them up and and just run with it and uh, and uh, customize the game and the setting as you go along. There's kind of a meta plot to the game, which is in reference to this book. The book line slightly advanced over time, but you don't have to use it. I've played a lot of game with Seven Seas, and and we touched a little bit on the the meta plot, but it never affects my player. So it's really a game about your 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 story. If you want to play 7C, the Game Master will need the other book, the Game Master's Guide. 7C is really a game where the player have their book and the Game Master have their own. Because since you have kings and queen and, and the characters, uh, uh, important characters and uh, meta plot, you have you have secrets that the GM should keep to it to to himself, and some rules that only the GM will use. So I really recommend the GM to to be upfront with the player in this game and and to tell them that uh, maybe they should they shouldn't spoil themselves by looking in the game master's guide. So there you go. <coughs> um, as far as game mechanics goes, uh, it's a pretty amazing game. It's pretty fun to play. Um, it, if I should categorize it, I should say that it's high on narration, it's average on game rules, and I would say it's low on simulation or simulating the reality unless you are simulating Jack Sparrow or Zorro <coughs> or Errol Flynn then, then this game simulate a cinematic reality really well it uses um, a dice pool of 10 sided dice that, that explode on, uh, on a 10 so when you roll a 10 on your dice you just keep rolling them and add, add the value uh, to your to your role. <clears throat> um, the difficulty in this game, and not the difficulty by, I don't mean difficulty by learning the game, is really standard uh, RPG uh, mechanics. If I can show you here. If you roll a 5, it's a mundane task, if you roll a 10, it's easy, and it goes way up to never to be done again. So when a player roll, uh, roll uh, a, f uh, a 40, mechanically, he, he have done something really incredible. So with the, 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 the exploding dice mechanic, it really can happen and it often happens in the games. I've had players who score 50 or 60 sometimes and you can really describe an awesome move when they do that. Or the player can... you can let the player descri describe their move. Often time it's, it's even better than your description. So, the character I uh, have uh, five stats Brawn, Finesse, Wits, Resolve, and Panache. Your Brawn is your classic strength. Finesse, Dexterity, Wits would be Intelligence. Resolve would be your Willpower and 
ability to withstand pain and panache would be your flair, your style, your quickness and the number of action you have in a, in a combat. So, <clears throat> when you create a character in a 7C you first determine one of two things would you rather play a sorcerer or a swords swordsman? You have to decide that before playing the game, before making your your character, because uh, those two types of characters uh, cost a lot of points. They cost a lot of points because um, when you when you have sorcery in your blood in this game, you can do pretty amazing stuff that not n no normal people can do. And if you choose the path of uh, of the swordsman you will then learn nifty tricks and uh, what they call in French uh, bot secret don't, well um, special special move uh, in uh, in l'escrime or or, uh, or uh, fencing that order uh, ordinary character won't won't have access to the game is played with d10s i said uh, the, the the game system behind Seven Seas is uh, is is called the Roll and Keep system. In this game, <coughs> you roll a bunch of of d10s together, and you only keep a certain amount of uh, of dice uh, on the table. You usually roll your threat, one of your stat, plus the level of your skill, and that's constitute your dice pool. You roll that on the table and you only keep a number of dice that is equal to your your stat. So if I'm fighting I will keep a number of dice equal to my finesse. If you have to create a character in 7C I would recommend at least a tree in finesse but it all depends ultimately on your concept. A 2 in finesse is fine for a non-combat character. <coughs> so, <coughs> well, you have to choose then if your character will be a sorcerer or a swordsman. But you can also take the points and run with it. You can make a character with 100 points and just by advantage, skills, uh, it's, uh, it's another way of creating a character, more advanced maybe but it gives you really uh, all the choice to create uh, several kind of heroes that are not necessarily a sorcerer or a swordsman. When you create a sorcerer you have uh, magic and the magic is based on your lineage or your heritage or your nation nationality if you're a Montaigne, for example, you're probably gonna get this, the, the kind of magic called Porte, which is about uh, teleportation. It may seem weird, but the, 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 the small adept of this uh, kind of magic can only teleport small object by ripping off reality and bleed out the world. Oftentimes, the sorcerer will have bloody hands and uh, when they work their magic. So every uh, little country have uh, their kind of magic. Vodace have uh, the sorte magic, uh, which is, um, they call them fate witch. It's a f only women can do uh, this kind of magic. It's, uh, it's a magic based on destiny, luck, predetermination, and uh, the fate witch are really feared the Seven C universe. They generally wear a veil over the head, and uh, and uh, they say that to look them in the eyes is to bring a bad curse on you or your family. In Vendel, you have Leerdom, which is a rune magic. In Usura, you have Piriem, the magic of shape shifting into a, a one animal form. So if you're a Piriem sorcerer, you will generally have one form and you will only uh, only have access to uh, the power of your animal and in Avalon you have the glamour magic it's really the fae, uh, the she kind of magic 
and she in the way of uh, of the fairy, the uh, the old folkloric fairy. There are other kinds of magic in the game, but they are oftentimes the purview of the GM, and they have little secret. The swordsman school. You have uh, a lot of swordsman school. In fact, I won't. I won't go through all them all because there are really a lot of swordsman school. But let's say let's say in general that they will represent a certain style. You have you have a musketeer fighting style. You have a broadsword fighting style. Uh, you have uh, every kind of weapon you can think of. But every school generally comes with an history and and a certain flair and 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 some dice mechanic that that are really simple but uh, really powerful in certain uh, in a certain uh, ways the game also uses a system of drama dice in uh, like in some other games uh, the drama dice in this game is really a pool of dice that you keep with you and that you use to uh, raise your roll when it's too low Suppose I roll a 10 and I need a 15, I could use one of my drama dice and uh, add it to uh, to my roll. You start with a number of drama dice equal to your panache, your, your flair, and uh, during the game the GM is encouraged to give you more, depending on how well you play your character. Um, The combat is very fluid in this game. It would uh, it would require another video, I think, to explain the combat system. But generally, it's really simple. You have a number of action equal to your panache, and during a melee round, you uh, you just spend your your action to attack or def defend yourself. And when you don't have action anymore, you cannot you cannot act anymore. Uh, also, I would say that this game have a system of advantage. Well, you have your skills, your civil skills and martial skills that are separated on the character sheet because you can play a, a more social character or a more badass warrior character. But you also have a advantage. Suppose my character is attractive or wealthy or a noble that will be figured out in the advantage uh, section and lastly your character can have a background a background are defining history bits that affect your character a lot I used to say that backgrounds are mostly the things that can kill you suppose I have a mortal enemy or a, an evil twin brother or or I have a the, the, a treasure a treasure map uh, tattooed on my head or uh, maybe uh, maybe my father gave me a secret before he died uh, maybe I know the location of a famous uh, famous art artifact all these kinds of things and background in 7c generally complicate your life the beauty of it and you have to pay for it when you create your character the beauty of it is when the GM uh, activate or place your background into the story he is obligated to give you more XP at the end of the game and give you drama dice because he complicate your life so 7C is really a good game for cinematic action it's one of those games that at the table if it don't create a level of trust with your player it need to be done because you have to trust each other with this with this game this game will me mechanically encourage trust between between GM and player, but ultimately it will lead to that mechanically, but it's one of those games you have to trust everyone at the table to have the maximum maximum good time. So there you go, that was my overall uh, review for same old G about the game 7C.